There are those out there who hold to the position of eternal security, who believe that Hebrews 6 cannot possibly be talking about somebody losing their salvation because it says in the passage that it's impossible to restore them again to repentance. Now, this has never really been much of a contradiction for me, but there are some people out there who go to great lengths explaining this and going into great detail uh, explaining why somebody can be restored to repentance. Um, but I feel that it's actually very simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at the passage first. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God, and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Okay, so many would say, see, it's clear as day. There you go. It says, for it is impossible to restore them again to repentance. Okay, so they're say, they say, if you were to take this passage to mean that you can lose your salvation, then you would also have to accept that it is clearly impossible to come back to God and therefore, this can't possibly mean that you can lose your salvation because we do see people come back to God. We do see people stray for a while and then give their lives back to God after a period of time. So they say, see, since it says it's impossible, there's no way that this passage could mean that. And this is probably what I might believe if there weren't other verses in the Bible that speak about this very thing. I think the key to understanding this passage is found in Mark 10. Okay, this is right after the rich young ruler walks away sad. And his, his disciples, it says, were astonished. And they said to him, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Okay, there's so many passages, not this one, not just this one, but there's others as well that say, that all things are possible with God, okay? Like right here. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God, okay? God is a God of the impossible. He's a God who parts the Red Sea. He's a God who resurrects people from the grave, okay? He's a God of miracles and healings and, and all of this. Okay, so yes, with us, it is impossible. It's impossible to do anything. It's impossible for us to repent without God. It's impossible for us to follow him, to love him without him. It's impossible for us to heal people without God. It's impossible for us to do the impossible without God. Okay, now let's just look at this. In Romans 11, it talks about this very thing. It talks about falling away, okay? And it says, otherwise you too will be cut off. But if you do not continue in your unbelief, be grafted in. For God has the power, okay? It's only God who has the power to grant somebody repentance and to graft them back in the tree. And then it says, for if you were cut off or cut from what is by nature wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature. See, this is this is something that's not typically done. I mean, for example, if a if a branch falls from the tree, it doesn't just graft itself back on. Okay, there's not some you know animal that comes comes up and just grafts it on the tree. That's not natural. It has to be done by a gardener. Okay, and God is the master gardener. Only He can grant somebody repentance and graft them on the tree. Let me just show you what this looks like. Okay, so here's a branch that fell from a tree. It's not just going to hop up and get back on the tree and start living and producing fruit. It's just not gonna happen. The only way for this to be able to live is to be grafted back on the tree. Okay, there's still life in it. It still might potentially be able to be saved and it has to be grafted back on, okay? But let's look at this, okay? This is clearly a dead branch. There's, there's no sign of life in this at all. So yes, it is impossible to 
put this back on a tree and to get it to grow. It's impossible. It's dead. But let's not forget again that God is a God of the impossible. He resurrects the dead. He heals the broken. Okay. So what he has to do in this is to resurrect this and give it new life. Then graft it back on the tree. This is absolutely impossible. Yes, 100% impossible to do on our own. We can't, we can't make ourselves alive again. Okay, when we spiritually die, we can't just resurrect ourselves. Okay, we can't resurrect ourselves physically or spiritually. It has to be done by God. But thank God we have a God who is a God of miracles. He can resurrect this. He can do whatever he wants. He can resurrect somebody spiritually and place them back on the tree. This is impossible with man, but it is entirely possible with God. Because again, with man, it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Now, do I believe that it's possible to harden yourself so much to the point where God hands you over to a reprobate mind? Yes, I do believe that that's what the Bible seems to state. If we just look at the devil and the demons, for example, they've gotten to a point where it appears that they would not be able to repent or unwilling to repent. Uh, If we look at Jesus when he talks about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, he talks about you not being forgiven in this age and the age to come. Uh, If we look at Pharaoh, uh, he, he just kept getting harder and harder and he was not willing to repent and to turn to God. And then the Bible talks about being handed over to a reprobate mind. But hear me very closely for a minute, because I know there's going to be some people out there who are going to say, yep, that's me. I've gone too far. I've sinned too much. God's not going to want to take me back. Now, listen to this. If you are sincere about turning back to God, if you're sincere about repenting and you feel true godly remorse for your sin, I believe that God will take you back. He is trying to reconcile his children back to him. Just like Jesus says, he goes after the lost sheep. He's wanting people to just to come to him. Okay, So what we have to do is repent. The fact that you're trying to repent and trying to be made right with God and sorry for your sins proves that you have not been handed over to a reprobate mind, I believe. Because think about it. The devil and the demons would not even be wanting to turn back to God and to stop sinning and to be made right with God. They've gone to the point where they don't even want that anymore. So if you're truly wanting that and seeking that, I do believe that God will grant that to you. I hope this helps somebody out there. That's all I got for today. God bless.